Walter Mignolo's epistemological framework draws significant inspiration from Michel Foucault's work, particularly in their shared emphasis on the relationship between knowledge and power. Despite this influence, Foucault's contributions have often been over in Anglo-American epistemology, as they are frequently regarded as belonging more to critical sociology than normative epistemology. However, Foucault himself argued against reducing knowledge to power entirely, emphasizing a dyadic relationship where power and knowledge, knowledge are intertwined but not synonymous. Foucault's analysis extended beyond the traditional spheres of application and discovery to include justification and explanation of truth regimes. He provided criteria for evaluating hegemonic and set knowledges, suggesting that the latter, which emerge from local contexts, are less likely to impose hierarchical structures of credibility. Similarly, Mignolo explores the relationship between knowledge and power within the context of European colonialism, highlighting the damaging epistemic effects of colonialism and the resistance it engenders. His work offers new conceptual formulations to understand colonial knowledge practices and anti-colonial epistemic resistance. Mignolo diverges from Foucault in addressing Foucault's colonial unconscious, particularly his tendency to divorce the development of modern epistemes from their colonial context. While Foucault acknowledged the role of race in governmental processes, he did not fully integrate it into his analysis of knowledge. Of knowledge. Mignolo's critical engagement with Foucault's concept of subjugated knowledges involves adapting and critiquing it within the colonial context. He emphasizes the need for epistemology to incorporate a geopolitical analysis of knowledge and advocates for border thinking which challenges Eurocentric perspectives. Latin American philosophers like Leopoldo Zia, Enrique Dussel, and Mignolo have highlighted the hierarchical nature of epistemic judgment under colonial systems. Zia encapsulates this by stating that, that the identity, rationality, and humanity of the peoples of the New World were judged by their conquerors. Amar Indian peoples were denied the opportunity to present their own epistemic credentials or judge European ones. These philosophers argue that extra-epistemic ethnic or racial identity often determine epistemic justification or the status of beliefs. They suggest that conquerors operating within a context of conquest develop epistemologies of ignorance that obscure social realities. This implies that structural down conditions play a significant role in shaping epistemic practices. Identity-based assessments have historically influenced epistemic practice as evidenced by the writings of philosophers like Plato, Aristotle, Bacon, Locke and others who associated epistemic credibility with factors such as gender, age, ethnicity and race. Mignolo's critique of Western epistemology focuses on its role in creating and maintaining a hierarchy of knowledge and knowers, particularly suited for colonialism. He aims to to topple this cultural hierarchy through his concept of subaltern reason, which seeks to reconceptualize divisions based on cognitive capacity. Mignolo, drawing from scholars like Quijano and Dazzle, argues that modernity emerged from colonialism and the coloniality of power organized the distribution of epistemic resources in a Eurocentric hegemony. He proposes transmodernity as an alternative to the Eurocentric timeline of modernity, emphasizing a planetary perspective that involves all parts of the globe. In Mignolo's framework, hegemony draws from Gramscian notions portraying it as the construction of mass consent through persuasion, primarily through claims to truth. This manifests in assertions of Western epistemic supremacy, 
justifying imperial actions on the assumption of Europe's intellectual superiority. For instance, Arthur Schlesinger asserts that Europe's invention of the scientific method gives it unique credibility and authority. This hegemonic narrative not only leads to widespread acceptance of imperial wars, but, but also produces symptomatic effects in colonized societies. It fosters a sense of alienation from one's own temporal reality, as observed by Samuel Ramos and Octavia Paz in their descriptions of Mexicans' detachment from their present. Mignolo critiques this Eurocentric organization of time, arguing that it displaces the colonized subjects' reference points of here and now, undermining their ability to judge claims of justification. He suggests that colonial alienation of consciousness necessitates a positional shift towards developing a philosophy reflective of Latin American reality. However, Mignolo questions the feasibility of constructing an alternative Latin American paradigm without thorough epistemological reflection. He advocates for a decolonial critical theory that, that dealings from modern imperial designs cautioning against borrowing Eurocentric concepts that perpetuate hierarchical boundaries. To challenge persistent limitations in Western knowledge practices, Mignolo proposes reinscribing the colonial difference into the order of into the order of representation. This involves displacing hierarchical and binary categories with pluralist and egalitarian ones, aiming to make our America central rather than peripheral in the global narrative. Mignolo's concept of the colonial difference seeks to, to unveil and disrupt the Eurocentric logic of representing others as existing on the same trajectory but further behind. It highlights how colonial power creates and evaluates difference, ultimately managing the colonial difference through the coloniality of power. Alcoff puts this regarding the nature of the colonial difference as conceptualized by Mignolo. Is colonial difference as conceptualized by Mignolo an absolute or relative difference? Does it exist independently or in relation to Eurocentrism? Is it similar to race emerging solely from colonialism or does it predate it as Dussel suggests with living labor and capitalism? In similar terms, what is the metaphysical status of this difference? Before delving into Mignolo's constructive efforts, Alcoff positions his critique of Western epistemology within its internal debates. Western philosophy has increasingly criticized binary concepts and absolutist views of knowledge since moving away from positivism. Hermeneutics, emphasizing understanding over mere facts, is often seen as gentler alternative to epistemology. While hermeneutics recognizes the role of interpretation and tradition in knowledge, Mignolo contends that it still fails to address coloniality's influence much like epistemology. Despite its reflexivity, hermeneutics maintains the subject-object distinction that epistemology does, hindering a comprehensive critique of colonial constructs. While Mignolo initially considered pluritopic hermeneutics as a solution, aiming to pluralize meaning and challenge Eurocentrism, he now advocates transcending both epistemology and hermeneutics. He introduces bot to blur the distinction between subject and object, aiming to overcome the limitations of both approaches. Mignolo's portrayal of Western philosophy can appear oversimplified, overlooking its internal complexities. Yet, he argues that Western epistemology's resistance to engaging with non-Western with non thought necessitates transcending rather than expanding Western paradigms. Mignolo critiques Immanuel Wallerstein's proposal to open up the social sciences, arguing for their transcendence instead. Opening up without decolonizing risks perpetuating colonialism by maintaining dependence on North Atlantic epistemologies. Mignolo's central concern is that the European systems of knowing and representing 
developed within the context of colonial power dynamics. To disentangle his approach from colonial assumptions, he is diverging from traditional Western philosophical ideas. However, this divergence is leading to some disagreement even among his postmodern allies who are less inclined toward reconstructing epistemic norms. In his attempt to reconstruct knowledge frameworks, Mignolo introduces the concept of border thinking or, thinking or border gnosis. Unlike traditional concerns about justification and belief formation, border thinking focuses on how knowledge is normatively defined in relation to its others. It aims to localize subaltern knowledge as a border location, challenging the tendency in modern epistemology to attach concepts from their local histories. Border thinking differs from theories of situated knowing by emphasizing the unique epistemic resources of specific sites rather than the limitation of all sites. It emerges from moments where the modern world system's imaginary cracks situated early within nor outside Western knowledge. This hybrid position allows for a double critique challenging both Western constructs and subaltern perspectives that mimic Western paradigms. Mignolo aims to de-subalternize knowledge by examining how knowledge is constructed and represented. He introduces the concept of gnosis, a broader notion of knowledge that includes diverse forms of knowing, beyond the dichotomy of justified belief and mere opinion. By incorporating various traditions of thinking about knowledge, Gnosis avoids the circularity of reasoning inherent in traditional epistemology, which defines its own current beliefs as the only legitimate practice. Border thinking thus plays with the idea of thinking from and about the border, challenging established boundaries of knowledge. Mignolo's exploration of gnosis or gnosiology expands the scope of knowledge beyond traditional epistemology. This shift not only broadens the definition of knowledge, but also changes how knowing is conceived. Practical, experimentally based knowledge, often marginalized in modern Western epistemology, is brought to the forefront. Mignolo suggests that the exclusion of such knowledge coincided with the colonial era as Western scientific techniques became the dominant paradigm. He contrasts border gnosis with contemporary epistemology in two key ways by emphasizing practical over representational knowledge and by border epistemologies rather than territorial ones. Border thinking aims not to represent an object domain accurately, but to transform the epistemic field itself, challenging rigid spatial and evaluative boundaries. While Mignolo's approach offers valuable insights, some questions remain. He questions whether truth should be abandoned in favor of nauseology, arguing that truth remains important despite its historical entanglement with colonial systems of knowing. His treatment of identity and difference is complex. While he acknowledges the constitutive role of colonialism in shaping difference, he also recognizes the critical knowledge generated by the colonial difference, suggesting its metaphysical significance.